Site logistics, right? Beginning with site condition survey, we've had photo documentation done. Um, we put together a report, we keep a binder. Uh, it's been shared with uh, different parties that have an interest in the job, such as REOC. Uh, inspection of plumbing for potential contaminants. It was a hospital. There were laboratories. Laboratories use heavy metals occasionally. You get mercury or you get lead. Um, we are inspecting all of the, the plumbing traps and they're going to have them tested to survey if there is any hazards that need to be abated to prevent anything from flushing out into the, the, into the sewer system. Fence installation, we're going to enclose the site within a fence which is going to be mounted on 20 foot long concrete barriers. It's a chain link uh, vinyl coated fence. It's going to stand 12 foot high in total. Um, its installation is underway. It's one of the first activities on site and the placement of the concrete barriers has already begun. You'll see better in another picture, but it's come across almost halfway around the site. Um, erosion control, tree protection are things that are required under the building code and by the contract specifications. Erosion control is basically a silk fence that sits inside of our, our security fence to prevent any dust debris from flowing out and into the water. Uh, tree protection, there are trees that are slated to remain that have a specific protocol where you protect around the drip line with the fence to prevent any equipment from driving over the roots or unintentionally bumping into a tree causing damage. Establishment of security, we have established a security presence on site. They are on site 24-7. <clears throat> Installation of mooring and barging operation. Barging operations began on the 21st. Uh, barging operations are going to continue throughout the site. All heavy load in, heavy load out is being done by the barging. Uh, the barge is a spud barge that has a crane that's docked on it, and basically it can come to the site at a location, designated location, and it spuds down and anchors into the riverbed, so it does so it remains stationary, and the crane then loads off of barges that are transported by tugboats to either load materials and equipment onto the site, or to take containers of waste, et cetera, equipment off of the site. Uh, the barging operation is a major part of this project, and we expect it to go for the entire duration of the job while we're on site. The idea of our general approach is a two-phase approach, beginning in the middle of the site. Uh, we'll see better in the later slides. We're going to cut through the site to create a phase one and a phase two, phase one being the north side. And we're going to work from the center, building C, northward, and then jump back once we complete that phase into building E and work southward. Um, the idea is to accommodate new construction that's being done for the development of the site. This is their first building that are beginning to take place over here. Um, to enable the construction of, to, for vehicles to pass, access to the site, there's a small link building in between. It's our intention to remove that early in the process in order to open up the flow so we don't have to drive construction vehicles around the site. We want to limit our movement on the site as much as possible. Um, delivery and staging of waste containers is done via the barge. The barge is on the east, in the east channel of the East River. It's right behind the E building in this location. And we're staging back in the old parking lots is where we're storing our equipment currently. There are several uh, waste containers in that spot. All right, here's a better look at our site logistics. Our fence is a three-sided fence for this phase of the job, the red dashed line going around the site. It's at the curb line. It's a concrete barrier at the curb line with a sliding vehicle gate or a swinging vehicle gate at the road access points where it does cross the road. Um, that is to be maintained 24-hour emergency vehicle access if fire department has to come at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is the way they come in. There's a security booth here. It will be manned by a guard. The guard will open the gate. Fire department comes in when they need to get in. There will always be somebody on site 24-7 to allow access to vehicles that are authorized to enter the site. <coughs> the, the site trailer is where we're going to operate our logistics on, so we're not working within the buildings while the work is going on. are going to be staged in the former parking lot in front of the E building. Um, there is going to be a sidewalk bridge on the sidewalk here. This F building is close to the sidewalk, which requires some manual demolition. Uh, building code 
has a limit with the distance you can do heavy mechanical demolition and its idea is public safety. If you're within 60 foot of a public passage, then you have to use a, a manual means of demolition. For that, you require overhead protection, which we'll have in the street here on the sidewalk outside the F building. Um, we are, it's the intention to backfill the foundations once the buildings have been demolished with material, clean material processed on site, for instance, brick, concrete, uh, masonry items that are clean, that don't have any asbestos, that don't have any contamination, will get crushed on site, stockpiled in debris. When a building is gone and its foundation is gone, the debris backfills, the, the material backfills into the site to bring it up to grade. <clears throat> that will that'll happen on both sides of the project for our phasing. Each building has three primary steps to complete it. The first is interior deconstruction, <coughs> right? And this is a non-abatement operation, and it's the removal of any remaining building contents. The buildings have largely been moved out by HHC, but there are still some building contents in there. Uh, removal of finishes and interior partitions and ceilings, any uh, sheetrock walls, cement block walls, any uh, ceiling, plaster ceilings, anything that is not a hazardous material, not contaminated, to open up the space to work for the abatement phase, which we'll talk about next. Uh, that removal of bathrooms, fixtures, etc. Um, perimeter walls, there's a plaster, the construction is a plaster wall backed by a terracotta block with a cavity wall backed by a brick um, interior to that. There's a, in the cavity wall, there's some heating pipes. Um, Waldorf is our demolition subcontractor for the interior and for the wrecking. They are the industry standard demolition contractor in New York City. They do more interior demolition work, more demolition work than anybody else. They're a subcontractor of ours. I would, if I had the ballpark, it, I would say the number of jobs we've done together with them is in the thousands. Abatement. Removal of light bulbs and ballasts, anything that has to do with light fixtures is a concern. Um, light bulbs go out as universal waste to the extent that surveys have been available. Um, none of the lights are hazardous. The installation of interior abatement containment, including a negative pressure system. Um, the, after the interior demolition leaves a floor, you're going to have a raw open space. You're going to have uh, the floor tiles asbestos, so it'll still be present, but you're going to have a wide open space that's masonry or asbestos or steel. And so the abatement comes in and installs a containment, which basically creates an airtight seal by an installation of barriers that are built to a specification in the New York City DEP regulations. The idea is you make the entire interior work area airtight. Once you've made it airtight, you operate your negative pressure system, which is basically a system of fans that work in series that are equipped with HEPA filtration that bring clean air into the work area through a controlled decontamination facility, filter it through HEPA filtration, 99.97 particulate capture efficiency, and then exhaust clean air to the exterior environment. The idea is doing abatement work, there are several engineering controls. The first engineering control is your plastic containment airtight seal. Your second engineering control is wet methods. You use water. Abatement always gets water. Anything that's best is before it gets touched for removal gets water. The negative pressure system is a further engineering control above that in that any dust that gets generated in a negative pressure containment gets sucked into the fan system, captured in a filter. That's the idea. So the, the interior abatement process, the setup of the containment, setup of the negative pressure system, Asbestos is removed by manual methods, right? You don't use drills or sanders, et cetera, to remove asbestos. You use hand tools, knives, scrapers, et cetera. Um, the procedure that we're going to be doing is known as subchapter G. It is a subsection of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection's regulations that's specific for pre-demolition asbestos abatement. It's a procedure that they have, especially for structures that are slated for demolition. Uh, the, there is some exterior work that needs to be done. There's window caulking, 
there is some roofing, uh, non-friable materials, meaning that asbestos fibers don't become airborne when you crush. Uh, you, can't, you can't make it into dust, basically. Uh, that's done by DEP's EVS procedure. It stands for exterior vertical surface. Um, the gist of it is these are procedures that are in the code. For the asbestos, we're not asking for any special relief from anything. These subchapters, the exterior vertical surface, this is what's in the regulations. This is what we're going to comply with. Uh, the window caulking will be done from the exterior using man lifts, um, the interior and exterior abatement will be performed simultaneously. There's a lot of work to get done. That way it allows us to move the ideas to turn over a building clean as soon as possible. Because, the, because of the way the site is, it's, it's one site, but it's multiple buildings. So the city has asked us to treat each building individually. So our process is to clear a building as soon as possible and move on to the next building while the demolition gets ready to come behind us, which we'll talk about a little bit next. So if you, if you picture the process going, interior demolition starts at the top, works through the building, gutting anything that they can. Behind that, asbestos <coughs> abatement starts above them, abates down until the building is clear. Once interior demolition completes, they move on to the next building. Once abatement completes, they follow the next building and we move forward into the structural deconstruction phase. In this phase, there is some trees that are slated for removal for future work. Um, the windows have to be removed so that you don't have glass raining down. Um, mechanical deconstruction of the building structural elements. What we're talking about here, because of the space of the site, because we control it with a site fence, we're requesting approval from the Department of Buildings for heavy mechanical means, which basically would be done by a large excavator type equipment using demolition uh, attachments. <clears throat> if you picture this as a building, the equipment works from the outside, working in, cutting into the clean structure, and then dropping waste into stockpiles. The waste gets sorted, debris gets sorted into masonry-type debris, your bricks and concrete in your block, which is going to be crushed to become backfill, sorting out any recyclables, <coughs> metal, steel, copper, etc so that everything can be sorted, its waste streams can be sorted. If it stays on site and it's processed, it goes to one spot. If it's gonna get packaged for recycling or packaged for disposal, it gets packaged and exits via the barge system. Um, all of the crushing, the masonry for clean fill is gonna take place on site. The process inv includes the removal of the foundation walls and the backfilling of the site, as I had discussed earlier with the clean fill. A little bit about the barging, right? The barging is on the east side of the site in the east channel of the East River. Uh, all heavy equipment, waste containers, etc., will come by barge and leave by barge. All waste and recycling will be removed by barge. Uh, barging subcontractor is an experienced barging subcontractor in the area. They do a lot of work here, uh, Don John Marine, and they have a barging plan that's been developed. Uh, they have also provided their required notification to the Coast Guard, so this operation is on their, on their radar. They have the approvals they need from them to proceed with it. It's an example of the type of crushing equipment we intend to mobilize to the site. This will be staged where shown on our logistics plans to create the clean fill. Sequence of work, uh, building by building. Here is our phase one uh, using the building identification lettering. The idea is to complete the phase one in 105 days uh, of schedule, right? This will show you a little bit how we envision the process to work. If your interior demolition shown in green, your asbestos abatement will be shown in yellow, structural deconstruction in red. So you see demolition starts, abatement starts, Demolition completes in the C, progresses to H. Abatement continues in C. When abatement completes in C, it moves to H. Interior demolition moves into D. And structural demolition on the C building begins. Now this process follows itself until it's gone and the site is backfilled. So as you chase through the job, you come to a, a, an inflection point where the phase two and phase one will overlap. The idea of this is to accommodate the schedule of the contract